Welcome to globalytraining.com. Globalytraining.com offers online courses covering various software technologies. New courses are added on a regular basis. You can email us at training at globalytraining.com or you can call us at 732-588-6564. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the video series on uh, HP uh, Unified Functional Testing Software. Let me go ahead and start it. Double click. Okay, here I have the add-in manager uh, screen. Uh, add-ins uh, within uh, EFT software are similar to plugins uh, for your browser. Uh, in the case of browser, you know, browser delivers the basic functionality, meaning you know you can browse to certain website and you know you can primarily you know navigate or you know you can browse the internet. But the add-ins within the browser provide a specific additional functionality. Say for example, you want to manage your bookmarks. You know you have an add-in for that. Say for example, um, you want to have uh, Google search uh, bar within your browser then there would be you know actually there is an add-in for that you know depending on your browser you would go to your browser resources and then you know uh, pick the desired plugins and install it same way uh, for UFT software I mean UFT software comes with the basic functionality and then in order for the UFT software to work with specific technology they have developed an add-in which you which is practically needed to work with that specific software say for example <clears throat> uh, WPF and zero light that's a kind of a new technology from Microsoft if say for example you're working with a uh, websites that use silver light then if you don't have this add-in enabled or installed then you know most likely your testing with zero light website would be a nightmare I mean you know interacting with the objects that are you know so specific to that particular technology so it's very essential that you know you have appropriate add-ins depending on the technology that you're working with uh, for now I'll just go ahead and check everything here and click OK and that should you know start our UFT software Give it like a maybe a few seconds here you go so uh, don't get uh, scared by the look of the UFT software these are all pains uh, meaning you know I can just go ahead and close all these just to clear the ground I'm gonna close everything okay it's all clean so this is a new uh, interface I believe this started at the uh, 11.x version of UFT software and prior to that it was a little bit different and um, I mean this is kind of sleek actually it's really uh, really beautiful this uh, IDE is close to uh, Eclipse IDE for Java development and uh, Visual Studio IDE for you know .NET technologies uh, development using C Sharp or VB.NET so uh, the the whole uh, feel of this environment is similar to that so here uh, let's uh, I'm gonna skip couple here and go to view and uh, these are all the windows that you can work with or make it uh, you know appear for you say for example solution let me start your solution explorer and uh, no, it displayed a window there I'll talk about what a solution explorer uh, explorer is in the later video but you know for now I'm just introducing you to the pins here and then I'm going to do a view toolbox and that appeared here I mean I can actually move this around I can kind of pin it wherever I want let's say if I do it here it's uh, you know kind of you know it's at the bottom here I can kind of move it I mean resize it but you know the preferable uh, location for solution is on the left hand side I mean it's again you know it's it's customizable you can you know kind of arrange it the way you want 
but I'm going to keep it the default way. So that's Solution Explorer. Uh, properties, you know, this is the properties uh, window on the left hand side. Uh, this would display the properties of the objects that we work with. And then <clears throat> we have um, a data that's coming here at the bottom. Then we have output to display the output of the script. And we have errors, any errors you would see there. And, you know, active screen. Uh, active screen is where you would see the screenshots of uh, the recordings. You know, we'll look at that when we do the sample recording. And then uh, there are, you know, a bunch of other stuff here, like test flow. We'll, we'll look into that uh, later when we actually record uh, the sample script. So, you know, we, a view menu will allow you to, you know, kind of make certain pane visible to you on the graphical user interface of UFT. So and there are other things, but we'll look into that while we, you know, record and go through the, you know, other sessions. But it's a basic thing around view, you know, viewing different windows. So let's go back to um, a file here. You know, file, just like uh, any other application, a file would, file menu would allow you to create a new script, you know, or open some an existing script. And also, in, on top of that, you know, you can save, save as you know, regular options, and you can export your script uh, to your zip file. You can do all that here. Uh, edit, uh, standard edit. You can, you know, undo, redo, cut, copy, paste. You know, all that basic things. You can you know, again search is a basic functionality. You can, you know, search within your script and things like that. Design. Uh, this will allow you to. Uh, enhance your script and we will look at pretty much all these options as we go through our course um, and don't worry about what actions are what checkpoints are for now this is, you know I will look at that in appropriate module record this you will use this menu to actually record uh, you know an action or you know a functionality or activity or script okay and run obviously you know is used to run your script and it's also used for debugging we'll you know look at that in you know, again you know different module resources uh, this menu will allow you to work with your you know primarily object repository uh, object repository is uh, something that will hold all your objects uh, don't worry if you don't understand what object repository is we have a separate video on that it will make more sense when you look at it I mean you look at that video Next, uh, ALM, uh, as you know what ALM is, you know, you can actually connect your UFT with ALM software and actually store your scripts there. You can check in your script, check out, you know, as you can see here, you can do all that from here, but you need connectivity to ALM uh, software or ALM system for that. Tools. There are other tools out there. We'll look, you know, specifically, we'll look at Object Spy. Uh, uh, you know, in particular, as we work through uh, through the Object Repository module. There are other things. You know, um, Object Spy. You know, Form Spy for .NET, and you know, importing WSDL, uh, Recipe Services, and you know, all that. And also, Data Driver. You know, we'll look at all that when we do uh, parameterization. A window, you know, just moving around within uh, your uh, graphical user interface and help menus for, you know, to access the help from the uh, UFT software. So that's um, a basic, uh, you know, tour around the UI. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, quickly create a new script. I'm going to say new. Uh, new GUI, that's fine. Um, Let's say create. So it's creating a new uh, test for me in the default location. We could have customized it. Okay, now little more information into our panes. You know, we, we, we created a new script. I mean, as of now, it is a blank test case or blank script. There's nothing in it, there's nothing it does. So a quick thing here on the solution solution is not named here it's unnamed solution and that's the actual um, test script <coughs> and action here uh, what action is uh, action as you can uh, you know as the name says it's a verb so 
whatever you record goes in there so that's what action is all about it it, it has bunch of activity inside that action so when you run the script that you're primarily uh, running the action and whatever is inside the action gets executed so let's uh, do a quick recording and uh, you know see what what it is like so yeah, let me go to we'll go in detail in terms of recording and settings for now just you know uh, bear with me I'm going to do a Windows application and I'm going to use Windows Calculator. Um, I'll say OK. I'm going to apply. OK. I'm going to do a basic recording. This is a record button. You can also go here and do record, or you, know, you can use icon here on the toolbar. I'm going to hit that. OK, now I have uh, the Windows Calculator. I'm going to do 10 plus 20 equal to done look at here uh, recording go even so it has recorded six events let me do this let me do one more time uh, I mean I'm continuing that 150 plus uh, 60 equal to 110 so look at the number it increased every time I do something uh, on the application it records those events and these number you know gets incremented and it's recording in action one and let me go ahead and stop it okay now let's uh, let's talk about a few more screens here number one everything got recorded in this action and here is the script and let me take a look at this if I you know if I'm here within that let's say for example you know this is closed let me do a file let's say a GUI test so let's say you know you don't have that uh, canvas i can double click here it opens a canvas this is called canvas and here what it does is you know you have a start and an end and all you have is one action which is action one and if you double click in the action you get the you know script behind the action and if you look at it it is uh, using calculator don't worry about this window calculator we'll get into that detail later in the next video so Within a calculator application, let me use this, adjust it a little bit. Okay, and it says win button, it's clicking some button, and then it goes to calculator again, click something else. So, to make it even more clear, let's look at the active screen. Here is the active screen. So, when I, when I <coughs> am on the line one, it says I hit button one line two hit zero line three plus sign line four if you let me make it a little bigger okay i'm on line four it's number two so as i go to different lines i'm actually seeing the screenshot that was captured while it was uh, recording at the time so at the time when it did the activity the script got generated and also a screenshot was captured and saved into the script so the active screen will display you the screenshots and let me uh, show you something else here which is uh, properties so as you okay this is a property let me go to actions okay here so when, when I'm depending on where you are within your screenshot or sorry within your canvas you're you know, seeing the properties of that particular uh, object so with the start it gives you some details on when it was created when it was modified different kind of properties and if you go to action I see the action name and where the action is located you know it can give you know description of the action if you want and whether it is reusable or not we look at actions in detail in a totally different video so for now just you know bear with me so I did a basic recording now let me go ahead and run it and see if it works I save I already saved it I'm going to do F5 to run it let me use temporary location so if you use the default it will save all your uh, run results into your script folder so you know what let me uh, use the default so that I can show it to you run so 
so now it's displaying you the results here it'll show you every step that within the script and shows you the some sort of status when when exactly the step was executed as it was running it want to track all that so we'll look at uh, results later but let me close it for now let me go ahead and run for one more time and now let me copy this location let me open that so what it does is this is where your script is and these are your actions and it every time you record you know it's RES stands for results or results one uh, and the next time when you run it becomes results two so while you're uh, you know kind of initially recording there's no point in having your results pointed to your strip location because you'll end up running many times and it just increases your uh, you know file system size what I would recommend to begin with is you know start off with the temporary and when you're done with your script at the end then switch it back to your results folder now if I run it you know the results will never be saved into my file system it goes into the temporary location and you know it gets cleared you know by your system so again you know I run it twice and uh, you know, I have results here we can look at these results later so anyway uh, that's how you you know uh, run I mean to say record and you know run your script well this anyway this is a basic introduction we will get into a lot more details into every little thing you know as we cruise through the course well thank you very much for watching I will talk to you in the next video